Gracious Lord, you call us despite our reluctance. You call us despite the fact that we are often disobedient. You call us regardless of our anger, our fear, our doubt. Lord, continue to call us that we might hear and answer and spread your love in the world. Amen. Last week, Mother Betsy eloquently shared with us the story of Joseph, who, by all accounts, is the poster child for a life lived and marked by forgiveness. Joseph's life gives to us an understanding of the freedom that comes in forgiveness. In Joseph's story, we see the blueprint for this life lived free. One, refuse to play God. Two, trust the work of God. And three, share the love of God. Joseph is not a perfect human. None of us are, but he understands and lives a full and rich life marked by forgiveness. For us today, it is easy to understand why Joseph and his story is important to the Christian life and faith. This week in our Old Testament reading, we move from Joseph to the prophet Jonah. Let's take a minute to remember that story of Jonah. In the very first verses of the book of Jonah, God calls him to go to the city of Nineveh and preach against wickedness, something that prophets did on a regular basis. Jonah promptly runs the other direction. He does this by boat. And while on the boat, he is caught in a great storm and is thrown into the sea by his shipmates. Jonah is then rescued by God into the belly of a large fish, it says. After praying for salvation, Jonah is vomited onto dry land. At this point, God again calls Jonah to go to Nineveh. At this time, Jonah obeys. The first day Jonah gets to Nineveh, he proclaims the judgment of God. And immediately, the king and all of the city repent, which is where our readings this morning pick up. In verse 10, we hear, when God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways. God changed his mind about the calamity he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. I don't know about you, but to me, this sounds like Jonah did his job. Time to celebrate. Nope. Instead, the scripture tells it that to Jonah, this was very displeasing to Jonah and he became angry. Let's pause for a moment and think about this guy, the prophet Jonah. So far, we know that he is at best a reluctant prophet, at worst, a disobedient one. He's judgmental, not only of the Ninevites, but of God and God's plan and God's mercy. He has some serious anger management issues, and he borders on being suicidal when he declares, it is better for me to die than to live. It makes you wonder. It makes me wonder why the story of Jonah is included in our Bible. I mean, his book is only four chapters long, and in my Bible, it's just two pages. What about this angry prophet is so compelling? What about Jonah is so important for believers to hear them then and now? Where is the good news, the gospel? in this short but profound book? Well, for me, the answer lies in chapter 4, verse 2. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. Think about it. This sounds an awful lot like a deep and abiding faith in God and God's faithfulness. 
Jonah clearly believes in God. Jonah knows God's very nature. Jonah trusts that God is gracious and filled with mercy and love for this world. Jonah knows that if God makes a promise, God will keep it. It's just that Jonah likes a good smiting. <laughs> he wants God to bring the boom. He and Jonathan Edwards, that great early American revivalists and preacher, agree on one thing. They want to see a litter sinners in the hands of an angry God. Last week's hero, Joseph, refused to play God, trusted the work of God, and shared God's love. In a much different way, Jonah also trusts in God. Jonah also shares the love of God with the Ninevites and brings about their salvation. He may have been reluctant, but in the end, he obeyed God's call. Jonah struggles with being judgmental, but once he accepts God's call, he faithfully carries out his mission. He does not try to play God. Jonah grumbles and seriously struggles with how God is choosing to be God. This is true. He is grouchy, he's angry, and he's so out of sorts with God's purpose and plan that he asks to die. And yes, for me, this is good news. It's good news because I understand Jonah's perspective, and I bet y'all do too. Throughout my life, I have heard God's call, known the pathway that God desired for me to walk, and like Jonah, sometimes I've run in the opposite direction. Let me give you an example. After receiving my undergraduate degree in theology from St. Edwards University, Steve and I moved back to Dallas for his job. Already, I knew that God was calling me into the work of the church. I knew I was anointed for ministry. But being the stubborn Scot-Irish girl that I am, I decided what I really needed to do was get a job in the business sector. I ended up working for a not-for-profit based out of Ross Perot's company, EDS. You may know it. Now, let me tell you a little something about EDS back in the 90s. There wasn't a more businessy business in the 90s than EDS. Women were required to wear skirts, hose, and heels. You were fined if you were out of dress code, if you were late, if you left early or parked in the wrong spot. Mistakes were used as opportunities to ridicule, and money was the absolute bottom line. Needless to say, I was absolutely miserable. Now I'm happy to say that God has redeemed that time for me. The salary was good, and it went a long way towards setting up house for Steve and I. After working at EDS, I had a very clear picture of what I didn't want in a workplace. And it gave me a great understanding of why people often stay in jobs that they dislike because a job provides for their families. When an opportunity came for me to work in youth ministry, I jumped at the chance and I returned to the Episcopal Church to where God had called me to begin with. Thankfully, my running the other direction did not end up with me being vomited out of a large fish. But you understand what I'm saying. Jonah is at times a reluctant prophet. And I think also all of us have at times been reluctant followers of Christ. Like Jonah, I also find God's forgiveness and mercy for others hard to swallow sometimes. I want to understand the bigger picture. I want to know what all this redemption is going to look like and what the salvation of the world, how it will come to happen. But a little vengeful comeuppance for an, an enemy from time to time, that wouldn't be so bad, now would it? Ever heard anyone say the phrase, it's just not fair. That's a good indication that they too are struggling with forgiveness and mercy. Also, Sharing God's love is sometimes hard. Our differences 
bias, and prejudice often get in the way of our ability to serve one another as Christ calls us to do. We judge one another and ourselves, and of course, find that we fall below the mark that Jesus has set. We, like Jonah, concern ourselves with unimportant things. Jonah worried more about a bush than a city of souls to save. We too lose focus, stray from our path, forget who we belong to and what we are called to do. But despite all of this, our God never deserts us. We can grouch and yell and scream and throw a holy spiritual temper tantrum. But just as God does not abandon Jonah, God does not abandon us. This is good news. Why is this short four chapter, two page book about an angry prophet in our Bible? Because it speaks the truth about our God. It speaks the truth about our God who loves us even when we fall short. So brothers and sisters, I leave you with this prayer today. May we strive for a life lived in freedom like Joseph, but may we know we are God's beloved even when we resemble Jonah. Amen.